We had just traveled roughly halfway down the Baja Peninsula from Ensenada to Bahia Tortuga. Robbie was serving up a fish soup for breakfast. Leftover white rice made into kanji, the last of the marinated bonito, ginger, green onion, and soy sauce. Now that we're nicely anchored and we've gotten a chance to test out the boat a little bit and <laughs> we've made it to Turtle Bay, uh, I'll, I guess I'll do a little walkthrough of the interior. This is apparently hull number one of the Morgan 54 sailboats. And I heard through the grapevine that Charlie Morgan, Morgan the designer of this boat, uh, wanted to come out on the trip perhaps with us. This is the next best thing we can do. We can film a little bit, bring him along for the voyage, bring everyone along. 54 feet is as spacious as you would expect, with plenty of practical storage space, although Rage is in need of a bit of handiwork, especially in the galley. We didn't manage to get the gimbaled stove working before the delivery, so here's the Coleman one doing its thing instead. The engine can be worked on almost 360 degrees around, so that's a very good access. And Robbie has turned this workspace into a fishing corner. This huge bin fits a full-size cooler in and more drinks at the back, and I think it's one of my favorite parts of the boat. The forward cabin is where Robbie and I have thrown a couple of our things, and the space is somewhat a blank canvas. The water and fuel tanks are under the bed, and this entire forward space, the sail and rope locker, and perhaps including the bed itself, I would reckon is about the size of the living space that we had on my way. It's nice to have so many backup sails to choose from, in case one of them gets blown out. Rage currently has a peculiar exhaust pipe system, which may be leaking somewhere, because the room smells strongly of exhaust when the engine is running. So no one sleeps in here when we're underway. Well, here's the head. It's a sneaky head that will require some new plumbing so that it doesn't accidentally sink the boat. And there's more accommodations near the stern. And a lot of electrical work to be done so that more of the onboard electronics can work again. And there's a great big strong steering quadrant behind the door here and a super cool crawl space. We just ran a, a needle and string through the fish, made some knots. And now I'm gonna wear it as a belt of dried smelly fish. Ah, uh, so you're making jewelry is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm making jewelry, yeah. Robbie had put some extra slices of bonito into salt overnight. It was now time to begin the dehydration process in the wonderfully dry Baja air. These are cut in a particular way so we don't need the strings to hang them up. This morning the boat was surrounded by what seemed to me to be some fascinating things. A couple of brant geese, chowing down on some strands of seagrass, their favorite treat. The town's large fishing boat was loading and unloading fuel and supplies onto the local amphibious cargo vehicle. first order of business before taking on more fuel was to stop the vessel from taking on more water through the compromised dripless shaft seal. So we're trying to make the, sure. the rent. So it fills up pretty fast once you peel that sleeve back? Once you peel that sleeve back, there's nothing uh, preventing water from coming in. This is now the stuffing box right here. Yep. And it's spring-loaded this way yeah. onto this puck. Yeah. And this puck has a surface yeah. that meets with a ring on this side. Yeah, I, I and 
If I was to see how if I pick yeah. that up and move it, well, water comes in. Yeah. So the spring keeps it pressured against the puck. puck yeah. And there was some crud in there, basically. Yeah. If you have a dirty seal, um, water will get through. After cleaning the area out with a rag, Scott was able to slow down the amount of water coming in. But he was not able to stop it completely. We could still visibly see the water trickling in, and the bilge would need to be manually pumped out every couple of hours. You think that's junk, or is that, like... It's an imperfection, imperfection so yeah. on, the, on this side, because it doesn't move with the drive shaft, it doesn't stop, it just... Fuel Ponga came by to fill us up with the exact amount that we had requested over the radio, and then they let us hop a ride back to shore with them with our engineless dinghy in tow. I would not attempt to carry heavy loads up or down these dock stairs, and I would not have too many people on these stairs at one time. The boater's entryway into Bahia Tartuga is pretty astonishing. We're not sure why the waterfront looks like this, but the rest of town is extremely quiet and easygoing. <laughs> With the friendliest street dog you ever did meet coming up to greet us immediately. She was so happy to meet new people. The only way in and out of Tortuga Bay over land is a dirt road for many, many miles. The dusty dog followed us to Scott's old surfing buddy's house. Adri was very accommodating and let us use her shower and brought us all out to the local surf break. Too much. <laughs> Too much. It was also my birthday, and I'm so happy to have shared it with these new friends along the spectacular shoreline of Baja. Last time I visited Turtle Bay several years ago, there was no cell phone coverage here, but this time there was. And oh boy, we checked the hell out of the weather forecast. The wind was coming from the perfect direction now, and the seas were calming down from the northerly blow that had happened the past two days. We said goodbye to our friends, pulled up the anchor from the 25-foot depth on the mud and sand, and took off from the bay. We put the anti-jibe in place so that the huge boom of this boat could not accidentally swing across to the opposite side if there was a slight change in heading, especially coming out of the bay, as we were running downwind.
Once we got out, we found a pretty calm ocean state. We hugged the shoreline as the winds varied throughout the day. Plenty of space for walking up on this deck. We were starting to really trust Rage and her speedy capabilities. All the while, balancing that with a healthy dose of awareness of the maturity of the rig. Okay, all I can really do is head down. Not even 30 seconds in the water. We got lunch. Probably a mackerel, because yeah, we're closer in. But that wasn't a mackerel, it was a bonito. Same size. It was a school that we went through, yeah. probably. It is small. Cut this in half. Cut it in half again. I think if the speedometer is showing four. It five knots, it means we're actually going three knots. But it's okay to take it easy sometimes, Robbie. Yep. There wasn't much of a chance of getting hit by a rainstorm around here anytime soon. Uh, no, I was like, I'm gonna grab it just for that. However, there were some sneaky waves about, and they began to wash the deck a little bit. But this is why I love the desert landscape meeting the sea. Hanging out with the fish jerky, some wind and sunshine, and then I was completely dry in no time. Our friend in Turtle Bay warned us about the lobster traps that we might encounter along the way. Pulling on this one, and you make sure this one go, can go freely. Yeah. We are not the most competitive type crew, but we kept Rage plowing along in the pretty light winds. It's been a very smooth day so far. We haven't started the engine again since we picked up the anchor in Turtle Bay and Rage is quietly and calmly speeding along smoothly over the ocean. We're actually quite privileged we, uh, for the forecast that we have. We've got a breeze coming off of the land, keeping the ocean quite flat. Hopefully that will continue into the night. You would usually expect to have um, wind coming over the ocean, coming from the direction of the ocean and building up. But in our case, uh, the wind is coming from the land and, and it's 
it's keeping that water flat. We, we did experience some chop today as the wind picked up and we might have another little bit of that kind of chop coming for us this morning but again hopefully it stays nice nice as it is and with the good sailing conditions I, I feel a lot better I think a, a, a lot of our stomachs are feeling a lot better as opposed to uh, motoring that we've been doing the last couple of evenings underway I, I've been feeling sick from it uh, and diesel fumes and diesel engine problems, those have all made a kind of a less than ideal state in my stomach, but uh, this evening feeling really nice, feeling really good so far. The morning brought brand new surprises. Pilot whales. They were moving along quickly and seriously. I didn't get a super clear view, but I imagine that this pod had very stern looks on their faces as they continued on by, hunting for squid. Our crew was pretty serious about hunting and feeding as well. As is custom, both lines went off at the same time. A pair of yellowfin tuna were on the lines. Can come and sit here, and I'll pass you the, the rods down. And I'll tell you crank, no cranks. Okay, Christian, crank. Slowly bring it up. It's a big boy, huh? It's a big boy, slowly crank. Slowly crank. Slowly crank. Slowly crank. Oh, oh. oh no. Robbie, of course, utterly enthused about the catch. Although I didn't know how we were going to eat it all. We got a rapala. It must have hit that so hard from the top, it just snapped. Look at that, the big <laughs> rapala's gone. The nomad survived. This little sucker survived like crazy. It was inhaled, it was all the way up in here in the mouth. He had inhaled, he inhaled it all. Within the hour, he was serving up seared tuna lunch. But this was only a small portion of the steaks. He also had another entire fish to cut up. Look at that. Zero. 
go fish waste. Later in the afternoon, he decided that we would have pieces of the ahi raw. I'm not the biggest fan of raw fish, but I must admit, this is one of the best things I have ever tasted. Another day down. We're probably not going to stop, maybe, not really. We'll see how the night treats us. We had the option of stopping at Bahia Santa Maria, just outside of Magdalena Bay, although anchoring would again take place in the dark. Stopping and resting would mean that, at our current speed, we would arrive in Cabo San Lucas at the perfect time of day according to the forecast. So we did end up stopping, very briefly. We put the anchor down, slept there for four hours, and pulled it back up again. We motored towards the only other boat in the bay, the Mexican Navy vessel, and Robbie proceeded to throw a big bag of yellowfin tuna at the chef out on deck. He was so pleased to have found somebody to share this fish with. The water outside of Magdalena Bay was glassy calm. There was a lot of boat activity around, and there was something else going on that was pretty wild. Magdalena Bay is a well-known whale-watching spot for tourists here in Mexico. At the entrance to this gigantic bay, I remember the super friendly grey whales that approached Rosa as the outgoing tide spit us out the last time I was here. Today, it looked like humpback whales were a little further out, jumping, having a blast doing what they do. The fishing rods, of course, they started going off. And to my dismay, some beautiful mahi-mahi or dorado were on the line. Flashing this otherworldly blue and yellow in the cockpit until the Dorado dies and turns a true gold. Robbie caught a couple of them, and then he finally gave in to my request to remove the barbs from the hooks and to consider catching and releasing anything else he found. Wow, there's a lot of Dorado here. Uh, I want to look if, if maybe we can release it without. It's a big one though, huh? A beast. I think I should drop it. <laughs> nice one, Abby. She's a beauty. Hold it up. That wasn't very graceful. It's, it's this crab? Crazy. Yeah. Scott, you want this? It's on, it's on the left hand side. Now let's put. 
Face. I think I'm gonna release this one, even though it's a big one. Look at that one. What? <laughs> it's all for it. Okay. Goodbye. Good job. I like how the music started, right? Is that good timing, Scott? Cutting up the Dorado this time around became a fish cleaning lesson for our crew member Christian. With another fish dinner frying up on the stovetop, we were preparing again for our night at sea. We filled our stomachs to help against the humidity and the cold that sits in after sundown, even this far south. We saw a lot of meteors most nights, but I was not prepared for this particular object in the sky. I didn't have my camera out at the time, so this was footage from someone else who was in the city of Cabo that evening. Meanwhile, I was at the helm, under the brilliantly starlit sky, just utterly stunned by this thing that looked like another hale -bop comet coming in low enough through the atmosphere that it looked like it was almost going to hit us halfway down the mast. I remember saying to Scott, who was out on the deck with me at the time, that I hoped that that thing would break up before hitting land. The sun began to rise. The southernmost tip of Baja California, the land's end, started to reveal itself through the mist. Robbie did a happy dance. We emptied the galley bucket. said hello to some more whales, polished off some more yellowfin tuna as hors d'oeuvres, and prepared for the crowds that were waiting just around the corner in Cabo Town, here at the world's end. 